Hi, my friends. Happy Saturday. Welcome to another Chit Chat live from East Texas. I'm your host, DC Gomez. And for those of you who don't know me and are new to this show and are joining us, I started this show about a year ago. And my goal was to give people tips and tools how to start living their best life now. I really wanted to give people a time and a place to be able to think about the things that make you dream and the things that you want to dream and how to help you to achieve them. I'm a mindset coach. So one of the things I truly believe is that honestly, everything starts with our thoughts. Everything starts the way we think, the way we see things, the, way, the things that we say. So if we're able to change those things, we're able to start living your best life now. So this is why we're here. Today, I want to talk all about risks or more importantly, the myth of risk taking. That's really what we're going to talk about. But before we start, my friends, go ahead, give this video a like, share it, give me some love, tell somebody, invite people to join us together. I truly believe a community is always better when we keep growing. So for those of you who are new, remember, if you have a question at any time, go ahead, put it in the comments. I'm going to be looking down at the bottom of my screen to make sure that I'm answering. If you're watching the replay, don't worry about it. I go back, I take a look at it. I'll answer any questions or concerns. So make sure you put some questions. And if you just want to contact me directly, go ahead and do that too as well. I am here. So let's get started. So here's kind of the strange thing. Honestly, my friends, it's been a month, exactly a month since we had our last chit chat. So the last time we met was literally February 6th. And February has been insane. It was crazy for me. I don't know if it was for the same of you guys, if you guys felt the pain. I ended up getting sick. For those of you in Texas, you guys probably went to snowmageddon with us. It was one of those very trying times. Not that the year before was any better, but we really had a lot of things hit us. It hit me very, very hard. So I had to make some decisions, kind of strangely enough. So one of the things that came to mind, believe it or not, was am I going to do a alive am i ready am i physically ready honestly most people would have said come on girls sit down rest relax get better that's what mom said but it wasn't that easy for me it was almost the same decisions that i had to make when i decided from going having a live every saturday to changing it over to twice a month things that i got over in my head that i had to question was what are people going to say is anybody watching this show? Is, are they expecting? Are they going to be disappointed? Are they going to get mad at me? I had all these thoughts going in the back of my head. Am I going to lose viewers? And am I going to lose this opportunity? Am I disappointing people? Those are the questions that a lot of us ask anytime we're making decisions. So we honestly, at some point in time, and I have been guilty, have paralysis by an indecision. We don't make actions. We don't take steps because we have so many thoughts going in our heads. We have all of these questions and we're to some extent afraid. So today's topic is very close to home because some of the things that I'm gonna talk about, it is truly the same thing that I honestly question. Risks, am I taking a risk? What am I going to lose? So let's start with some definitions because you guys all know I wanna start us all in the same playing field. So this is what Webster Dictionary says. If you still have a dictionary, do a Google search, you'll be fine. So this is what the dictionary is all about. So think about it this way. The possibility of loss or even more hazard. In today's societies, my friends, loss can be anything from your health, finance, emotions, you know, friends and families. We always have these fears. We have a fear that we're going to lose something. A lot of the times we don't do things but we stops ourselves from doing it because of that fear. We truly are wondering what is in it? What am I going to lose? What is going to happen? So when you're thinking of this definition, remember our definitions are based on a lot of concepts back in the days. So think about it. One of the most common phrases that we hear about it. So think about it this way, better safe than sorry. How many times growing up and probably now have you heard it even better? How many times have you said it? It's better to be safe than sorry, or it's the devil that you know kind of thing. Think about all these things that we have. As a mindset coach, I'm a true believer that everything is a program behavior. We have been programmed to some extent over years and years of hearing these things and believing it. The question is, have you ever thought about where they came from? At what point in time in your life did you pick up these things? Who told you these things? Better safe than sorry. So I'm a life learner. 
Hence the reason that I'm here. I want to share it. I want people to learn. So one of the people that I admire that I'm absolutely crazy for is Paul Martinelli. So if you guys are not familiar, he's on Facebook. He has an incredible community, the Empower community. Paul is amazing. So he has this incredible talk on rest, which is some of the things I want to share with you guys today. But he has one of those stories that will motivate you. If you believe in rags to riches kind of thing, if you believe that you can change your life, Paul is that example. But one of the things he talks a lot about is he had to change his mindset in order to get there. With Paul, he is a true believer that that saying, better safe than sorry, is holding people back. And I want to dig into that and say why. Why is it that you think is holding people back? One of the things that he mentions that I adore is the fact that it is not helping us get to the next level. It is holding people back in the conditions that they're stuck. It is making us believe that we truly can't take a chance. So we continue to promote the same behaviors in our lives. We continue to stay in the same bubble that we're in. So some of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is what is it that is holding us back? Do we believe there's a risk? So here's what he talks about. It's all about conditions. So when you're thinking about it, think in terms of your life of the situations that you're having. So when you're thinking of a risk, and by the way, let's be honest, I am not seriously talking about jumping out of a plane. That is not what we're discussing. We're not discussing, you know, bungee jumping, those kind of things. We're talking about the things that are holding you back to move to the next step in your life. We're talking about the decisions that are holding you back in terms of living your next best life. So let's put it into perspective. Have you thought about starting a business? Have you thought about going back to school? Have you thought about taking a financial leap to get your family to where you're being? Think about buying a house. Those are the decisions that we have every day. I know a lot of people that talk about, I want to start a new home. I want to move to a better neighborhood. I want to do these things. And when you ask them what is holding them back, there is all these fears. You know, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. What am I going to do? What if it doesn't work out? What if the loan doesn't come through? The weird thing about all of this is they have never taken a step to figure it out if they even qualified. You know, they haven't started looking for the houses, but they have all these fears that is holding them back. Same thing with the business. So think about it this way. You know, in your heart, you have this idea that you want to start a new business. You have this idea, whatever that might be, or a new, I, I like calling a side hustle. You want to start something new. But in your mind, you continue to talk yourself out of it. I've been there. Like, I can raise my hands. Let's take, let's take accountability today. When I decided that I wanted to start writing, you know, I had to run out of excuses to be able to say, I want to write a book and become a novelist. Like, but I went through all those things. You know, in my mind, it was that fear that was holding me back. It was the fear of what will people would say. Once again, remember, we have those fears of what people think. We had the fear of, what if nobody reads this book? What if nobody likes it? What if this book is horrible? So all of these thoughts are the things that we're talking about. It was the fear of taking the risk. I was convinced, what, what am I gonna do? What are people going to say about me if I decide to take this leap of faith? So what we do and we continue to do is we spend a lot of time with the what ifs. I had a, honestly, I had a priest that told us once, what if is a distraction? And what if is holding you back? So if you're truly trying to think, what is it that is keeping you there? Let's discuss it. So Paul has this theory, and I want to introduce it to you guys, and I want you guys to tell me what you think. So take a look at this. This is what Paul said. He says, it is impossible. And look at how many times he says it. It is impossible for you to have a vision. Think about your future or goal. It is impossible for you to have this awareness in your soul that you want to do this. And honestly, I think it's amazing. And honestly, have fear or risk. So this is what Paul says, and we're going to discuss this a little more. Paul truly believes the risk is a myth, that it is actually something that we perceive as going to happen. Because what Paul is truly trying to tell us, and I love his lecture on it, is that at no point in time any of us will ever be given an idea. So whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever you believe in, so there is never going to be giving you an idea that you haven't been given the resources to actually accomplish it. So what he's saying, what he says, and this is something that I didn't realize and it changed my mind. Anytime we're afraid of risk is becoming, we are basing it in a place of lack. We're coming from a place that we are not enough. We're looking at our lives as there is not enough resources. So think about it this way. 
it could be resources for your talent. You don't think you have a talent, you don't have enough skills, you don't have enough abilities. So when you're thinking of taking those leaps, you're holding yourself back for the simple fact that you don't believe that you can actually do that. There is a sense of lack. We're not good enough to accomplish these things. So what Paul says to all of us is, there is no way ever for us to have an idea that we have not already been given the resources to do it. There is no way for your soul to conceive this concept and you not have the skills to be able to bring it together. So the reality is, do we believe that? Do we truly believe that we have the skills and ability? So let's talk a little bit about this, because remember, I'm all about mindset. It all starts in the way we see ourselves. It all starts in the way we see our situations and conditions. Yes, let's be honest, our conditions can be overwhelming. That is true. We can be placed in a place in our life that is beyond our control. It doesn't mean we stay there. It doesn't mean where you are at is where you're supposed to be. That's not what life is all about. It is also involves understanding that it comes with some believe it or not, taking those leaps of faith. It is a process that is involved. The so success doesn't just happen overnight. So let's go back to my situation with my book. Let me give you that situation to kind of put it in perspective. When I first started out, I went through what Amazon call creative space. And the process, that program, they disbanded, which is a shame. But I had no idea what I was doing. So I went in, I jumped into this process. I wanted to learn more about it. And I was terrified, let's be honest. I'm going to put my words into the world and I'm going to give you everything I have and I'm praying to God, people like it. So I got into this. So one of the things they did that was amazing is that they went ahead and created a cover for me. They did all this information, it was great. I loved the cover, it was this picture of this girl that she was very pensive, beautiful. I was in love with my cover. I was in love with the book, I was all excited. So here's what happened. Fast forward about a year, I have two books out, I'm ready to start promoting, and I send it out to get a promotion package because I was looking for somebody to help me. The young man sent me this reply back. He says, your premise is great, your cover doesn't quite work. And it crushed me. I was like, say what? So not only did it take me a long time to get out of my bubble to get this book, now somebody tells me it doesn't work. Like the cover doesn't work, the cover is not good. The cover was not matching my actual theme. It didn't match my genre. It didn't match what I was trying to sell. A lot of people, once you read the book, they fell in love with the cover, you know, related to my main character. We kind of went through it. But one of the problem was a lot of people thought it was a romance novel or it was a, you know, like Twilight, which didn't quite match the book at all. So I had to take a risk. I had to take the risk and realize I didn't lose anything. So here's what happens when we take these risks, that we believe they're risks you're not losing anything. That's the part. That's the reality of it. There is not a loss when it comes to knowledge. There's not a loss in investing in yourself. Because at the end of the day, that conversation, as much as it hurt, let's be honest, when somebody tells you your baby's ugly, it's going to hurt. He literally told me my baby was ugly. I was like, oh, I can't believe you said that. But it was real and I needed to hear it. But it made me more conscious to look at things like covers. Does my cover portray what I'm trying to say? Does it make sense with my genre? It also helped me to kind of educate myself in the field better. So when you're thinking of risk, the only thing you're losing is the place where you're at in your life. The only thing that changes, believe it or not, is how you see yourself. So here's the thing. Put it into simple terms. It's an exchange, it's a trade. So think about going to college. Nobody ever thinks of college as a risk for the most part. As adults, we do because we're like, that's a lot of money. What am I going to get out of it? But when you're finishing high school, you're not thinking of college as a risk. You're thinking of information. You're paying to go learn. You're paying to get better. You're trying to get a craft. It's the same thing as adults. So when we're getting ready to invest in ourselves, an investment is never going to be something you're not going to get better. It is learning to get your skills and abilities because success takes time. I've spent a lot of time. I've spent a lot of money. So I usually tell all my friends, what you care about is judge where you spend your time and your money, those two things, period. If you're telling me you care about your family and you're not spending time with them, then you might have a problem. So think about it that way. So what you truly care, what matters in your life is always based on those things, where you spend your time, where you spend your money. So when you're thinking of getting yourself to your next level, when you're thinking about getting unstuck, because if Paul is right, and I truly agree that he is, risk is a myth. When you're getting over that myth, you have to make some changes. That's the catch. 
So here's the thing. What kind of changes can we make? What kind of changes can you make to take these leaps? Let's be honest about it. First thing is understanding that your current situation is a program behavior. Let's start with that. You're currently here because of where you've been in your life, of how you were raised, or the things that were said, the things that you believed in, the, the belief system that was brought into it. So that's number one. You first have to understand and admit, I am here based on my upbringing and the situations that I've been. Check. The next thing you have to say is truly look into it. Are those beliefs serving me? That's kind of the catch. Are these things getting me to where I want to be in my life? If your belief system's not serving you, and 90% of us, honestly, if you're feeling stuck and you're not going where you want to be, then those beliefs are not serving you, my friends. You're not where you want to be in your life. So if you're feeling yourself stuck, you're not going where you want to be, you're not moving forward, then the belief system you have is not working for you anymore. So now we got to change it. The beautiful thing is it's a habit. We can change it every time. It takes time. It takes a little bit of growing. You're going to have some lessons. You're going to fall a little. You're going to have some pains. That is okay. It is life. We're supposed to grow every day. So here's the thing. Time to change it. How do you change it? Understand, I am programmed. I can reprogram. It's a behavior. Two, this is not serving. Be honest enough about it. Take inventory of it. Take self-awareness. And then three, truly look at it. Is there actually a risk? What actually can you truly lose? That's what I want you guys to think about it. Because a lot of the things and the myth about risk is that we're going to lose something. The something in our life is going to happen that is going to put us in a worse situation than we're currently at. So if going back to school is going to help you pick up that business, what is the risk behind it? What is truly you're going to lose? Because normally we always think about money and finances. Do you going to have enough money to pay for it? Is that really something you can do? Do they have resources in that school that can help you pay for it? Can you be better of it? So that's one of the things you want to look at it. So here's a quote that I want you guys to kind of pay attention. Tell me what you think. It's not what we can do, but what we're willing to do that counts. What are we willing to do, my friends? Truly, truly willing to do to get us to the next level in our lives. This is the part most of us honestly are really much afraid. What is it that we truly want to do to get us to the next step? We had a whole conversation a few months back about trades. What are you willing to give up? You know, what is it that you want to be? It is very easy to look across the street. I always tell everybody, the grass is always greener on the other side. Unfortunately, you still have to cut it. That grass might be beautiful and perfect. You still have to cut it. What are you willing to do to get you to the place in your life you say you want to be? What is that place that you think you're supposed to be or the dreams that you have? What are you willing to sacrifice? Sometimes sacrifice means time. Are you willing to actually get off Facebook? By the way, it's kind of strange to talk about Facebook when you're on Facebook. I, I'm that person. I'm always confused about it. What are we willing to do to do it? What are you willing to commit? What is your dreams are worth? You know, nowadays it is easy to go back to school. It is easy to start a business. We have the resources. The problem that we have, and you know, most of the study says, you know, a lot of, you know, 80% of business fail within the first five years. And then out of those remaining 20%, you know, another 80 fails the next five, primarily because they failed to plan. They failed to prepare themselves. There's a lot of resources. And a lot of things has to do with fear. What is, what are you willing to do? What is your dreams? So if Paul is correct, let's go back to that theory that we have been given the resources and abilities to actually achieve our goals. It took me a while to believe that. It took me a while to truly let that theory sink into myself and be able to say, there is a book in you. There is a dream in you. There is an ability in you. And I had to be able to believe it. I had to change my mind to believe that I was able to be a writer. And now it sounds kind of interesting and silly to me because I'm like, what was holding me back? Really, what was keeping me from taking that step? Believe it or not, my friends, it was what people had told me. I was listening to the words of other people. I had led other people's seeds, other people's fears, other people's perception of me, change the way I saw myself and truly change how I saw my potential. So when you're thinking about what you want to do, when you're thinking about, am I willing to take the next step? Let's talk about purpose. Where is this idea coming from? If your purpose is aligned with who you truly are, your authentic self, you know, you're truly doing this because it makes you happy. You're truly doing this because it makes you smile. That risk is not there. There is not a risk in there because 
believe it or not, is going to get you to your next level. So start thinking about what is it that you want to see yourself in? Six months, a year, three years. Are you willing to invest in yourself? Are you willing, are you good enough to be investing in yourself? This is the catch. So when we're taking a flax, one of the things that I realized that I had to change to myself a lot more was the perception that I was not enough. And I didn't realize those thoughts were in my head. Into somebody asked me to invest in a program, to actually self-help program. And I honestly thought, do I really want it? I have no issues investing in other people. I have no issues in taking care of other people. But I didn't put myself first. I couldn't. I, I was a secondary character in my own world. So let's back it up. Remember that I had all these discussions when we started the program about missing a live. You know, that third one, third Saturday of February, I couldn't do it. I was devastated what I was going to do. I'm all about preaching self-help, like, you know, taking care of yourself. I'm all about being good to yourself, making sure you're staying healthy, making sure you're staying balanced. And yet, I was not practicing what I preach. I was not, because of fear, the risk of losing people, the risk of disappointing, the risk of letting people down, I failed to truly look at myself and say, am I taking care of myself? Am I healthy? Am I balanced? Even more, am I happy? Because at the end of the day, life is very short, but it can be a very long ride if you're miserable. So I had to go back and reassess myself and had to do lots of analysis. So risk comes with understanding that when you're thinking about it, it's all a perception a perception of we're losing something. And it is the perception, as Webster said, and for those of you who are joining us, make sure you see, here's the definition again. It is that idea of possible loss or injury. So when you're thinking about it, is it truly going to happen? Is risk actually there? So think about a myth, because it is. If you're following your, your true dreams and your authentic dreams, and you're trying to get to the next step in your life, what is holding you back from getting there? So, Paul says, you have been given the resources and ability for every idea that was given to you to take the next step. You cannot have an idea. It is impossible for any of us to be gifted with an idea and not been given the resources. I was given the idea. I can tell you it was divine inspiration to write a book taking place in Texarkana based on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Absolutely came. That, that was the idea. That was the inspiration. And one book led to another, led to another, to a five book series with three novellas. I was given that inspiration. I had no idea how to put this book together. Let's be honest. I had no idea how to publish a book. I had no idea what a final cover. I had no idea what any of these things were going to do to put this book together. I knew I wanted to write a book. I got the inspiration to write a book. The beautiful thing is, and if you believe in perverse, it says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that when I was ready to write it, when I was ready to put the book in place, all these little pieces fell in place. I didn't have to go searching for it. You know, I was able to find editors. I've been through several of them and I know friends who are amazing at it. I was able to find cover designers. I was able to put these things together. Once I allowed myself the understanding to change my belief system that yes, I am good enough to write a book. Yes, I am meant to write a book. Yes, I've been given the skills and abilities to write a book. Was it easy? No, <laughs> let's be honest. It took time. It took lessons, it took classes, it took falling, it took failing, it took getting up. But it made my journey to my life right here so amazing. So let's be honest. Do I want to live a life of mediocrity for other people to keep them happy? Because that's what we do when we settle for less. We make other people happy we encourage their behavior, we truly believe them, but we're always kind of unsettled. So do I want to live a life of other people or do I want to take the leap of faith and actually follow my dreams? Because at the end of the day, did I lose anything? Not at all. Like I am officially in a much better place right now than I am ever because I truly believed it. I believe that I was able to write a book. So risk, it's all about changing your belief system, my friends. It's all about understanding that you are actually have nothing to lose here. It is all about taking those leaps and truly jumping in there and being able to follow your path and being able to believe that you're meant to do better things. So as we get ready to transition, you all know I'm here to support you. You all know I'm here to cheer you on because I truly believe you guys are meant to do amazing things. So I'm 
taking those leaps of faith. So as I get ready to continue to give you something, I decided to kind of change a little bit of the program. So I hope you guys are ready. So we're going to meet back in two weeks. And what I'm bringing is all about curiosity. We're all about how do I give you more? How do I bring you more information? How do I motivate you more? So the next time we meet, so be in two weeks, remember that, we're going to do what I'm calling poetry for healing. Probably because I'm a writer, I'm big into it. I truly believe we all need to heal our souls in any way possible. Poetry, spoken word, is one of those things that I'm always blown away. So I have invited several poets to join us on the show. So this is going to be a little bit interesting. So it's not just me for 30 minutes talking to you guys. So we're going to have, I think, four or five amazing poets coming in. I have lined them up. So same time, same place. They're going to be doing some readings. We're going to do it through Zoom. It was going to be broadcasted live on Facebook. Absolutely amazing. They have some powerful messages. They have been through some amazing things in their lives and they're very transformative. So I want you guys to hear how poetry can change your life, how poetry can take you to the next level and how that's just hearing it, but also writing it. Here's the thing, my friends, whether you're writing, whether you're creating, you can do all these things for yourself. It doesn't have to be something you share or publish or give it to the world. So we're going to have poets coming on the show that I'm super excited. I'm also getting ready to line up some other speakers and other presenters to come and join us. So you have an opportunity to actually get a little bit more of everything to get you to a much more round and very happy place. So if you have suggestions of things that you wanted me to talk about, send me a note. I'd love to hear it. So that's kind of coming up on the next one. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up. It's going to be fabulous. If you are new to the program, you're just joining us, make sure you sign up for the notifications so that way you know when the lives are coming, you can follow me along. I am getting to ready to transition. And this is kind of why this program is very, very personal for myself. Because I am very, to some extent, for most people who know me, extremely goofy. I am. I don't take myself very seriously. But in the last couple of years, it always feels like I'm becoming much more serious and much more focused on what people are saying, primarily probably because I'm doing a lot of these things. I went to school to be behind the camera. I went to school to truly create stories. I'm a storyteller. So I get very self-conscious. So I am thinking I have to be very serious. I get to be very focused. So we're going back to basics. We're going back to what makes me happy. So you'll probably see a much more lighter side of me, hopefully, <laughs> and a probably more goofy side of me, but it is all those little pieces, I guess. What is the risk? What do I got to lose? I'm all about living an authentic self, an authentic life and giving you guys something of that. So I would never ask anybody to do something I'm not practicing. So this is where I am. I want you guys to be healthy. I want you guys to be taking care of yourself. So with that in mind, it also means that if you have to make changes in your lives, get rid of the things that are not working out. That's been one of my things lately. I'm in transition. Things that are no longer serving me are going away. So that involves stuff, that involves emotions, that might even involve connections. If they're not serving, they're not taking you to the next level, if they're not making you better, they're not fulfilling you, they're not making you smile, let's go with smiles, then they're not meant to be in your life. Enjoy the moment, enjoy the present, enjoy where you're at and take a risk because believe it or not, there's no such thing as a risk. All you can do is just get better. All you can do is improve. All you can do is just enjoy your journey. So my friends, it has been like usual, such a pleasure to have you. I'm always super excited you guys are joining me on a Saturday morning because you can be doing anything and anywhere and having an amazing day. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you actually can look at it. Remember what Paul says. Remember this quote as you get ready to take on your day. Is that what we can do? It is what we're willing to do that accounts. What are you willing to do? my friends, to get you to the next step? What are you willing to do and commit to to get you to the life you want to live? Live your dreams, leave them now. Embrace the fact that you're meant to be happy, you're meant to be amazing, and you are amazing. So, till next time, I'll see you guys in two weeks with a really fun program. I hope, cross your fingers, let's see how that comes out. And let's make sure we have it all together. So happy Saturday, see you guys in two weeks. Adios, everybody.